Reports here at topvelocity.net. In this video, we're gonna go over some basic arm action drills. So it is popular to look for, people wanna learn more about arm action. The problem is it's probably not the best way to learn how the delivery works. The arm works with the trunk, specifically around what we call counter movements. And I'll teach you a little bit about that in a second. But the problem is, is if we're learning the arm independent of the trunk, then we're really not learning the true biomechanics of, of your arm action. So it's only gonna be best if any arm action drill you're doing, the arm is working with the trunk. So the trunk movements, basically there's two trunk movements. There's a rotational movement, and then there's a linear movement. Elite pitchers have as much power through the linear movement as they do the rotational movement. Amateur pitchers, low level pitchers, are typically just in the, the rotational movement. So their arm action is really dependent on how it's working with a rotating trunk. And that's why you see a lot of these guys flying out, always talking about trying to be inside 90. That's because the arm is being thrown into or away from the body because the trunk is rotating so hard, the centrifugal force is pulling it away. So the problem is, is if you take that kind of a picture and you try to work on the arm, action or the arm path with the poor or more rotational trunk you're going to be battling uh you know the process you're, you're not going to be really getting to the the source of the problem which is the trunk so we've got to make sure we understand how the trunk and the and the arm work together and how to better improve the trunk initially so you know with top velocity we teach all the leg drives the leg drives are there to power the trunk so once the trunk it, you know, if the, go, if the trunk's going too rotational, then we've got to learn to drive better to get the trunk uh, going more forward. So that aside, if we're just working on arm action, we can simplify this. So we can put you down on a knee and we can eliminate the lower half, but we still have to get the trunk moving the way we want it so the arm action can be taught around the correct movement. So that's why I like to use a pad. So we're gonna work on a knee and I like to use a pad because the pad allows me to throw my trunk forward. And I don't, I don't have the worries about slamming hard into the ground. And once I have that, then I can make sure every time I throw my trunk forward so I can correctly teach the arm path. Now in the arm path, right? Even with our trunk going forward, we're working through trunk rotation and linear trunk tilt. So the arm path has to work with that. And how it works with that with is, is when the elbow is up, shoulder height, and pinch back, what we call horizontal abduction, that is separating from trunk rotation. So that's gonna allow more trunk rotation, okay? So the, the purpose of loading the scap or scap loading, the horizontal abduction, is to allow more trunk rotation. For example, if I had just, say, shoulders closed, I had cocked my arm right in line with my trunk, and I went to rotate, because I don't have a lot of scap loading, I would more quickly throw and I would cut off trunk rotation. So this movement is gonna allow more trunk rotation. What allows more trunk tilt, a forward trunk tilt? That's the layback or external rotation. So the layback is gonna allow the trunk to go more forward. And we have studies that show 86% of the energy that gets to the ball comes from the trunk. So if we can get a lot more trunk rotation, forward trunk tilt, then we can get more energy to the ball. And that's where the arm can help that. So if the arm can load more back and scap loading, now I can allow more trunk rotation. If it can lay back more in external rotation, I can allow more forward trunk tilt. Now I'm getting more uh, forces to the ball. So the arm action that we're gonna learn and the drills we're gonna learn is gonna be making sure we're supporting the trunk movements. Because if we're teaching arm action that isn't there to support the trunk movements, then we're not really working with the studies that show 86% of the energy that gets the ball comes from the trunk, okay? So we're gonna work on those movements. Now, one question I get a lot is, how do I improve layback? Layback is something ultimately that should be addressed through strength. If you address layback through stretching, then you could be promoting uh, laxity or weakness to gain external rotation. That's a real bad way to do it because we know the forces in the arm are excessively high the harder we throw. So we don't wanna promote laxity or weakness to gain more mobility or range of motion to push more energy through our bodies where we're going to need more stability to resist or deceleration forces to de resist all that energy. So I do not recommend stretching for layback because of that problem. So what you ultimately should be doing is strengthening for more layback 
and you should be developing more linear forces in your trunk and allowing your arm to resist or lay back against that over time, which will, you'll gain more range of motion. So no, no, no aggressive stretching and lay back. It's a real, uh, it's, it's setting you up for injury. All right, so I'm gonna give you some cool drills here for teaching arm action. So we got the pad and we understand the two movements of the trunk. The first one we're gonna start with is just the linear move. So we're just basically gonna move our trunk forward and we're gonna work on layback. Then we're gonna add in rotation, put in the scap loading horizontal abduction and then add that to the movement, okay? But the key is, is to keep your trunk very dynamic. So we're gonna start off with the med ball. So we have a two pound med ball, we can do one pound as well. We don't need to go over two. We're gonna have it up and over the head. I'm gonna lead through the hips. I want the hips to fully engage, the glute to squeeze, and everything to lay back as I go forward. So as, as the hips are coming up, this is laying back, and then the trunk's gonna go, and that's why the pad's here, so I can really push it out there, and then my arm's gonna go. And that's the sequence. That's a good kinematic sequence. Hip, trunk, arm. So it would look like this. And I'm really falling into the pad, and I wanna feel all that momentum accelerating going forward. I don't wanna feel my momentum slowing down. So those are pretty easy to do. Then you pick up the football. The football's great because it teaches the, the uh, forearm rotational movements. So the first movement is we're resisting pronation by the thumb going back into supination. And then as we go into internal rotation, we should feel good pronation coming forward. If you do that with a football, you get a good spiral. Sometimes obviously you're gonna have to get farther back to see your spiral, but I wanna see the nose coming down into the target. That means I'm pronating well. So no rotation here. Hips coming up, everything's going back. No rotation, right? So it's like this, and you can do these little bounces just to get the feel of it. And then the same thing, hip, trunk, arm, and through. Now, if you're, don't, you know, you're too close, can't see the spiral, definitely you can move back, all right? So same thing. All right, good, then we can move on to the baseball. All right, so with the baseball, same thing. You can get your glove out if you want. We're just in layback, resisting pronation or supination. The thumb goes back, resisting it. And then we're gonna fire into pronation, okay? Okay, so now you're teaching the arm path, working with the trunk, receiving the energy from the trunk, pumping the energy from the trunk to the ball, right? If I'm just sitting here throwing my arm, that's not what we wanna train. There you're training the ball to, or the arm to do the work. We want to train the arm to funnel the energy, not generate it, right? Okay, good. All right, so from there we can add in rotation. So I'm going to first add in rotation with the med ball. So what I want is your glutes tight. So really fire your glutes because my hips need to be up. Now we're going to turn the trunk. We're trying to get as much thoracic rotation as we can. We're trying to get to 90. The hips are all the way open. We want to get 90. That would be optimal, all right? So we're going to load the scap now because now we're adding in rotation. So here we were just going linear trunks. So it was going right to external rotation. But now we're adding in rotation. You can load the scap. So pinch the scap all the way back. Then we're going to cock the ball all the way up, hands on this side of the head. Then as we turn and go forward, the arm's going to lay back so we can allow the forward trunk movement. So first is scap loading to allow trunk rotation. Then as we turn out of that, we lay back to allow linear move, linear trunk. So think about it. that's what the arm's job is to do. Go here to allow trunk rotation. Go here to allow linear trunk forces, linear trunk tilt. All right, so we're gonna practice that. The key here is to make sure you cock before rotation. Once again, that's why it's good to have a pad here because you don't stop early and push the ball. That would be wrong. So if I was, not moving my trunk all the way through. And I would say getting to right here and I stop, then I'd be pushing the ball. That's not what we want. We want the arm laying back and the trunk delivering the forces. That's why we need the pad, okay? So it's like this. Okay? And it's hard with the two-handed throw not to push the ball. So you have to really be quick and aggressive to throw your trunk forward. Now we can do it with the football, okay? Get the ball back to the elbow, but pinch the scap, Turn the trunk, we're gonna cock the arm before rotation, and then we lay back and go forward. Now, if you feel the football flying out of your hand, you're losing your grip, and you also could be pushing the ball. 
So make sure as you're going forward, it lays back and then it quickly turns over and pronates to get the spire out of the ball. That's what we want. Okay, so up and back and cock. Then forward, good layback in your trunk. Now to the baseball, same thing, okay? You can bring your glove in. Now I wanna put the glove out here as I pinch the scat back. I'm gonna cock before rotation. I'm gonna turn this over into rotation as a fulcrum so it lays back and my trunk's gonna carry and pump the energy forward, right? So it's like this. Okay. You'll feel, if you stop your trunk, you're gonna have way less forces on the ball. You're gonna have way less pop out of your hand. So if I went like this and I stop my trunk, I'm gonna feel all arm. But if I keep my trunk moving, I'm gonna feel all this energy pumping through my body or through my trunk to the ball. Right? So that combination through the med ball, two hands to the football, one hand, to the baseball one hand, teaching you rotation to linear or first starting linear to release. You're gonna learn the proper arm action through these arm action drills that supports the full kinetic chain and it's not teaching you bad habits by just working the arm or training the arm to move on its own independent of the body. But really want it to be a funnel along for the ride and that's why these drills are gonna help you develop that. I hope that helps.